The senator from Illinois. Yeah, President, uh, almost 30 years ago, I worked in the uh, House of Commons in London. In Parliament, a new member's maiden speech is given great weight. Traditionally, the speech is used to highlight what a member's priorities are and sets the tone for his tenure. My experience in London guided my thoughts 10 years ago when I was elected to the House of Representatives. My maiden, my maiden speech then focused on the unique political history of the 10th Congressional District of Illinois and its tradition of electing thoughtful, independent leaders. As I stand here today, newly elected by the people of Illinois, thank you, to represent their interests in the Senate, I recall my first speech in the House and how humbled I was to follow such a distinguished group of men and women in office. I'm equally humbled now as I assume the office of United States Senator for the state of Illinois. Since our admission in the Union in 1818, Illinois has sent a diverse list of senators to this chamber. Many of my predecessors served in uniform valiantly. Others had brilliant legal careers, while still others excelled in international diplomacy. As I take office, I want to reflect on those who represented Illinois in the Senate before me, their accomplishments, and the imprint they left on our great nation. One name hangs above all others. He never served in the Senate, but he ran for the office in 1858. Abraham Lincoln was defeated in that election, but he won the nation's support for the high office that he later sought in the Lincoln-Douglas debates. His story also reminds the Republican and Democratic opponents of the current members of this Senate that the best days for those defeated opponents in public life may still be ahead of them. With regard to our senators who served Illinois, the first I will mention is Ninian Edwards, a pioneer at the time when Illinois was actually a frontier. First elected in 1818, he served until 1824 when he stepped down to become the United States Minister to Mexico. He had the distinction of being both the governor of the territory and state of Illinois. A true servant of the people, he died in 1833 when he helped treat the victims of a cholera epidemic carried back by soldiers who served during the Black Hawk War. Senator James Shields reminded us that we are a state and a nation of immigrants. Born in Ireland, he became a naturalized citizen in 1840. He served in the Mexican-American War under General Zachary Taylor, commanding a brigade in the battles of Veracruz, Cerro Gordo, Contreras, Churubusco, and Chapultepec. Already one of America's leading Irish Americans, Brigadier General Shields would later command a division during the Civil War, taking his men against Stonewall Jackson in the Valley Campaign of 1862. He was twice elected to the Senate in 1849, first in March and then again in October. But his first election was voided on the grounds that he had not been a U.S. citizen for the required nine years. Eight months later, he won election again and was finally seated. Senator Shields is the only member of this body to have served in the Senate from three states. In addition to Illinois, he was elected in Minnesota and Missouri. Senator Shields also nearly changed the course of this nation. In 1842, a young Abraham Lincoln wrote an anonymous letter to the Sangamon Journal criticizing then State Auditor Shields for his decision to require the payment of taxes in silver or gold. When Lincoln's future wife, Mary Todd, and her friend got in the act of writing additional missives, Shields asked the editor to reveal the identity of the letter writers. When Lincoln claimed responsibility for all the letters, Shields demanded satisfaction and challenged Lincoln to a duel. Lincoln chose broadswords as the weapon of choice, and the two made plans to travel to Missouri as dueling in Illinois was illegal at the time. Luckily, cooler heads prevailed and the duel was called off, averting a potential history-changing event. Serving from 1847 to 1861, Democratic Senator Stephen Douglas 
was known as the Little Giant during his short, because of his short stature but powerful hold on the U.S. Senate. While accomplished, he was overshadowed by Lincoln despite Lincoln's loss to Douglas in the 1858 Senate election. Douglas served as the architect of the Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854 that repealed the Missouri Compromise, allowing settlers in Kansas and Nebraska to determine whether or not to allow slavery. Douglas's reputation waned in later years when he led the Democratic Party to defeat in the election of 1860 by defending slavery in the southern states. His miscalculation dealt a blow to the ruling Democrats, allowing a new anti-slavery Republican Party to win the White House. Another Illinois Senator, David Davis, holds a unique distinction, having served as an Associate Justice on the U.S. Supreme Court prior to his Senate service. In his nearly 15 years on the court, Davis is best known for writing the decision in Ex Parte Milligan, holding that a death sentence handed down by a Civil War military commission against a civilian was unconstitutional as civilian courts were functioning at the time. The Illinois legislature elected Davis to the Senate in the midst of the disputed 1876 presidential election between Rutherford B. Hayes and Samuel Tilden. Because of his service on the Supreme Court and his long reputation for fierce independence, Senator Davis was elected president pro tem of the Senate following the assassination of President Garfield. Under the law of the time, this placed him next in line of succession to President Chester A. Arthur, even though he was a freshman senator. One of our greatest senators was the man from Pekin, Senator Everett McKinley Dirksen, who served for nearly 20 years in the middle of the 20th century. His leadership was apparent early in his life. During the First World War, he entered service in the field artillery as a private and left as a second lieutenant. While in the Senate, he worked his way to lead the party as minority leader and developed a reputation as a pragmatic and thoughtful legislator. He is best known for his role in passing the Civil Rights Act of 1864. It was Dirksen who said on the floor of the Senate, the time has come for equality of opportunity in the sharing of government, in education and employment. It must not be stayed or denied, it is here. It was Dirksen who helped gather the votes for cloture on the groundbreaking legislation, ending the longest filibuster in Senate history of 534 hours, one minute and 51 seconds. If there is one of our Illinois senators whose spirit hangs closest to me as I begin my service here, it's Dirksen's. Senator Dirksen's reputation as a fiscal conservative and social moderate is one that I hope to follow in my service here in the Senate. Senator Dirksen died after a bout with cancer in 1969, but his legacy lives on. One of the three Senate office buildings bears his name, as well as Chicago's federal courthouse. Senator Charles Percy entered the Senate in 1867, serving alongside Senator Dirksen for two years. He was a Rockefeller Republican, representing the moderate wing of the Republican Party in the Senate and went on to chair the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. In addition to his work on foreign relations, he worked on legislation to provide home ownership to low-income families. Senator Percy and I also share a similar background. Both he and I are graduates of New Trier High School in Winnetka and both served in the United States Navy. Senator Percy's greatest legacy for Illinois was his work to eliminate the corrupt practice of nominating federal judges from the Chicago political machine. I would like to follow in Senator Percy's footsteps by ensuring judicial nominations go through a rigorous advisory process. Alan Dixon served Illinois in the Senate from 1981 to 1993. But before he came to Washington, he served both in the Illinois House and Senate and later won statewide elections for treasurer and as secretary of state. He earned a deserved reputation as a thoughtful and moderate senator who served the people of Illinois with a quiet dedication. And after leaving the Senate, went on to chair the Defense Base Alignment 
and Closure Commission in 1994 and 95. Born in Eugene, Oregon, Senator Paul Simon served from 1985 to 1997 as a staunch fiscal pay-as-you-go Democrat. Simon worked with Senator Orrin Hatch of Utah on a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution. Although unsuccessful at the time, deserves renewed attention now in the light of our crippling federal debt. Although he did not win the Democratic presidential nomination in 1988, his greatest legacy may be the creation of the Paul Simon Public Policy Institute at Southern Illinois University, where he served as director until his death in 2003 following heart surgery. Senator Carol Mosley Brown was a true daughter, or is a true daughter of Chicago. She was born in the city, attended Chicago public schools, and received degrees from the University of Illinois at Chicago and the University of Chicago. She remains today as the only African-American woman to have served in the Senate. And after she departed the Senate, she served as our ambassador to New Zealand and remains committed to public service today and is currently running for mayor of Chicago. Senator Peter Fitzgerald came to Washington two years before I began my service in the House. I was honored to serve the Illinois delegation uh, with him for four years. When I took the oath of office here in the Senate, it was Senator Fitzgerald and Senator Durbin at my side recognizing that our leadership of our state requires a firm commitment to bipartisanship. Senator Fitzgerald was born in Elgin and raised in Inverness. He represented the Northwest suburbs in the Illinois State Senate before his election to the U.S. Senate. Senator Fitzgerald's legacy in Illinois will forever be remembered for bringing one of the nation's most dedicated crime fighters to our state. Senator Fitzgerald is the reason why the Northern District of Illinois is home to one of the best prosecutors in America, U.S. Attorney Patrick Fitzgerald. Patrick Fitzgerald, who is of no relation to the senator, has done more to fight public corruption in our state than any other person. Senator Peter Fitzgerald fought a tough battle to recruit and appoint Patrick Fitzgerald. Before his arrival, Illinois had become the Wild West of politics and one of the most corrupt states in the nation. Under his tenure, U.S. Attorney Fitzgerald convicted two governors of corruption and countless other state and local officials. We will forever live with the embarrassment of convicted criminals like Governor Bogoyevich, but with the leadership of Senator Peter Fitzgerald, we found the right prosecutor to slowly restore